Hey everybody, welcome to, welcome back to Ogre Speed Shop on the first day of fall. And we got rain, it's kinda nice. And uh, we are officially out of the 90s for the rest of the year by the looks of it. So we're gonna go into part three of getting the truck back on the road, hopefully. So we gotta get the motor into the truck with a few little more uh, preparations we gotta do to it before we do that. But first- You gotta get the lights turned back on in here. I turned everything off because of the storm last night and in case, uh, we had electricity, or uh, we had electricity, in case we had a lightning strike. I didn't want to take any chances of uh, frying anything in the shop, so I turned all the power off. But, get those turned back on. Get everything back up and going. There we go, get the door open. Oh, yeah, so I, I moved all the cars inside last night because I didn't know what kind of storm we are going to have, but you know, even if we aren't going to have hail or anything like that, we have debris that flies around a lot around here from uh, the branches flying off and whatnot. So I like to move the cars inside so they don't get damaged. All right, got the cars moved out. So let's go ahead and get this engine installed in the truck. All right, so what do we have left to do to get this thing in here? For one, we got to clean up the engine bay a little bit. I'm not talking about like clean, clean, but... Uh, Pull out some of the trash, get the wire loom, uh, get some wire loom on some of the wires that have uh, peeled off of it or lost it now. Maybe clean up some of the insulation on the firewall from the stupid mouse that got in here or the rat that got in here. And uh, see what else, we got gaskets. So we got the intake manifold gaskets over here. We got the motor mounts, we got to put those on. Still debating on whether I'm putting the tra transmission mount on or not. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna, I probably will go ahead and do the fuel rail seals too, or the fuel injector seals too. But before we do anything, I forgot about something. Typical 5.3 liter, both of the rear exhaust manifold bolts have broken off. So we need to get those out. So we're gonna do that first. So I tried giving her a tap with a uh, punch and everything, but that didn't work. I just got stabbed by something. It didn't feel good. But uh, so that didn't work. So we're just gonna go right to the tried and true uh, welding. Sure you watch your eyes while I do this. Well, that has to be a uh, history made right there because I think it's the first time I've ever done that and got them both on the first try. It usually takes me three on average, but we got them out of there, so I'll chase it with a chase tool and get her ready and she can go in the truck now. So we gotta clean up that mess in there a little bit first. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and throw the motor mounts on here so that part's done. I found this kind of interesting. So these are the motor mount bolts that came with the New motor, little short ones. These are the ones that came out of my old motor. So, what's up with that? I don't know why you need that much thread, because you don't. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use the short ones. Obviously the shield goes up to protect it from the exhaust manifolds. Alright, new motor mounts are on. This engine stand turns really nicely. Alright, so the first thing I think we need to do is get the truck dropped down a little bit. I got up on the six tonners, but I'm gonna put it on a shorter set. So even being six foot five, it's hard for me to get down inside here to get to stuff, to clean up and reorganize and fix wire loom and all that good stuff. So we're gonna right, do that so first. Down to a much more manageable uh, height for me to work in here a little bit easier. And plus, I don't have to lift the motor up quite as far. 
So I'm kind of curious if this has like a maintenance mode where I can uh, disconnect this bolt here and raise this hood up a little higher. Give me more room to get this uh, engine in. So we're gonna try that real quick. Definitely well, looks like we can go to maintenance mode here. So now we got much more room to go up. That'll give us a lot more room to work. I almost wish I could take it off, but I, I am by myself. So. Well, I'm trying to record, but when it rains, you can't hear nothing in here. So, taking a little break, watching all the rain come down. All right, so we got the motor mounts on there now. The next thing we want to put on is the AC bracket. And as you're going, as you're putting this in here, and I'll get to that when we do it, you got to make sure this bottom bolt on the compressor, the one down here, goes in before you drop it all the way in. Otherwise, it hits the frame. So you want to make sure so there's three long bolts that hold it in on these three, and then one shorter one that goes to here that holds the compressor up at, on that part. So first things first, though, let's get the bracket tightened down. And then uh, it'll be about time to start lowering it in here. I did some wiring repair on it. Uh, I could probably add some more to the fuel injection stuff right there. Um, but I got all the wires kind of out of the way now. Um, the fuel lines are tucked up in there now. So I just making room to drop the motor down in there and then I'll worry about all the rest of the stuff when the time comes for that, as far as mounting the wire harness that goes underneath the car, underneath the motor and on the motor and power steering bracket and all that good stuff. But, like I said, as we're lowering it down in, we're going to attach the AC compressor because the frame's in the way to get one of the bolts out, or in in this case. So, that's what we're going to do. All right, so it's time to chain her up and drop her in. Let's get her done. She is in, and I kind of forgot to do this, but you can actually get that on. As long as the bolt's already in the compressor, in this bottom bolt, you can get it in there. So it went in pretty easily. Um, but yeah, it's in and ready to be fully assembled now. All right, so I got the uh, power steering and the alternator bracket on there. Got the AC mostly bolted down. I got to get the two bottom bolts still. Uh, I'll start running cabling here in a minute for now I'm taking a break because that's kind of a pain in the butt doing that all by myself so yep I was actually climbed inside this uh, engine bay too kind of funny all right so I've reached a point where I need to get under the truck now so since we don't need it down this low to work to put the engine in and work on the front so I do have my step stool here my ammo can that I use so I can still get up on top of here when it comes time but I need to get underneath it to start routing wiring and put everything back together underneath there. So that's the next step. Let's do, let's get into it. All right. So between the <clears throat> rain and the wind and, you know, it's just uh, wiring basically and being underneath the truck most of the time. I haven't filmed a whole lot, but we got most of the wiring ready to go. Um, I think the intake's going to be the next thing to go on. And because this is all fuel injection, the fuel injectors. Um, I'm not sure what that one is. It might be, I think it might be the, uh, the EVAP canister or EVAP pur sur uh, purge valve or whatever. Um, so I do need to get new wires for the spark plug wires. I guess I could put the exhaust manifolds back on now. Um, but yeah, I got most of the stuff. All the grounds are connected now, except for this one up here. I'm not sure exactly where it goes yet. There's one left that might go down here with the other one, but I don't know for sure. Doesn't seem to want to go anywhere. So we'll see. Maybe it has something to do with the intake. I don't know. I don't think there's a ground on the intake because it's plastic, but you never know. So, so that's the only ground left. I got to figure out where it goes. Um, if you look back here, you see I took the insulation off. I don't know if I'll ever replace it or not. I gotta check and see if it's even available, but it was completely torn up from the rat. 
and I don't really want to deal with that. So it actually kind of frees up some room as far as getting the bolts back here. But, but yeah, that's, uh, so yeah, I can't think of what else to say here, but uh, let's get some more stuff put on here. So I think I'll go ahead and get the intake on there. All right, so let's kind of put the uh, intake back on here so I can try to figure out the rest of this wiring. Get it locked down. See, you didn't actually think I was going to forget those rags in there, did you? I got them out. All right, so I'm pretty beat now. It's probably, I don't know what time it is, close to nine, I think. And uh, I got the exhaust manifolds on, intakes on, most of the front accessories are on. I probably will fire it up without all that on there. That way I can hear and listen for everything else. I'm going to fire it up without the transmission on it, too, just like we did when we uh, were troubleshooting it. So. Um, got most of the wires run. I got that one ground back there. I think it goes to the back of the head or the back of the block. So I'll do that tomorrow underneath. But like I said, I'm beat. I've actually kind of nice bit of work all day today without overheating because it was nice temperature being the first day of fall. And it only got up to 68 today. No, I actually only got to 60 outside and 68 in the shop, which is perfect to work in. So... But anyways, well, see all the point now where it's almost time to try to crank it. What is that? Oh, that's the uh, mass sensor. So, got oil in it now. I got to tighten down the coil packs. But uh, other than that, I'm not going to leave. I'm, like I said before, I'm not going to hook everything up until I know it fires, basically, and what it sounds like. But I got to put the exhaust on it, so when I do fire it up, I can hear it. So that's going to be the next thing I do. Like I said, it's already got oil in it. And all the electrical is hooked up now, except for that's the uh, um, alternator trigger, and then the map sensor, the MAF sensor over here, the mass airflow. So like I guess that it'll run without that. So I'm not too worried about it. But everything else is hooked up: fuel lines, vacuum lines. I got found up, hooked that ground up that was back there. Um, the dipstick tubes in there now. I got to torque the exhaust manifold bolts but yep so we're gonna put the exhaust uh on now so i can hear it when it fires up if it right, fires exhaust up. man or the exhaust pipes on show you that real quick all right there the y pipe what is that bolt for it's not a bolt <laughs> um no idea what that goes to but she's ready to fire up I just gotta see if I got spark plugs and wires that enough to make a full set or not. Some of them broke when they were taken off, so yeah. All right, got the spark plugs ready to go in. Yes, they look dirty, but the uh, the ends they were running fine. Um, I had to repair a couple of spark plug wires, and those are new. I bought them like less than a year ago. First time I pull them off the truck, they break. Go figure. But they are the cheapest ones from O'Reilly's. But you know, I think they'd be a little bit better than that. So. But before we do anything, I am going to crank the motor over with no spark plugs in it because I know there was uh, some uh, oil and a little bit of debris left in there. So I'm going to let those blow out and uh, should be good after that. And then uh, we'll try cranking her up and see if she'll run for us. Oh yeah, I got to relocate that uh, um, EGR solenoid tube to, to be under everything. But other than that, we're good to go. The exhaust pipe's on, like I said. Got to plug in some O2 sensors, tighten that one. And uh, still got to tighten the coil packs down. But yeah, we should be good to go pretty soon.
All right, well, we're definitely getting somewhere. I don't know why it won't start from the key, but it doesn't start from the key. If I can turn the key on, come out here and see if it does this time, but it kind of, not a good sound. Here's some kind of clunking somewhere. So I'm gonna set you guys up out here. Can't run it for very long because I don't have coolant in it yet. I'm gonna give you a couple, a couple of revs here. So there is kind of a weird clunking noise initially, but it kind of goes away. And like, I don't have the mass sensor hooked up. I don't have, you know, alternator. I don't know why it won't start on the key because I had it working before like this, but I'm sure I'm just missing something. That's the ground for the hood, so it shouldn't matter. Unless it does, but I don't know why it would. Um, but yeah, so I gotta check some relays maybe, I don't know. But it starts and runs. Just gotta button everything up now and see what it does. I don't know what that kind of knocking noise is when it first starts up, but I don't like it. It's almost like something's hitting the timing cover. Or... Kind of makes me wonder, did I tighten the freaking timing chain? Did I tighten the cam down? Ugh. I hate when I go, can't go back and look. Well, actually I could, I might be able to check the video. So I might do that and see if I did torque them down. All right, so she's actually sounding really good now. I put the AC belt on and it works, but you don't have fans yet, so. But uh, I definitely need to clean up this water pump. That'll be the next thing I gotta do because it's slimy, but it, nothing wrong with it. It's working fine and it feels good. So that'll be the next thing. I already replaced that pulley. So you get this on here, cleaned up, and put it back on, but it is uh, like almost nine o'clock. Actually, I think it's eight something. I think I came out here close to eight. So tomorrow, my little bad boy gets cleaned up. We got new gaskets for it. And we get the coolant system back on here so we can actually do an engine flush as well. Cause I still wanna run some cleaner through it. And I put the cheaper oil in, even though it's, it's O'Reilly's, but it's synthetic. But yeah, I'm actually pretty excited now because it's uh, sounding good. I don't know what that noise was originally. Maybe it was just something um, adjusting to whatever. I don't know, but we won't know until we have the whole system back together. So that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow, getting everything back on there and hopefully doing a test drive. All right, so it's the next day I checked the footage. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I definitely torqued and thread uh, locked the bolts for the cam and the water or the oil pump. So we're good on that. So whatever the rattling was, I heard it once this morning. It's not like it came from under the valve cover. So maybe a sticking rocker or something, but we gotta get some heat in this thing and see how it does. So right now we're getting ready to put the water pump on right there. Got the gas gets and the bolts in it right now. And I'm gonna install it now. 10 millimeter bolts. Shouldn't be too bad to get in. As long as the, uh, as long as my ammo can doesn't give out on me and I don't lose the gaskets. All right. Everything's lined up. Just that one sticky one. Let's get this torque down. Doing 18 foot pounds again, or 216 inch pounds. Good old crisscross pattern. So we got the water pump on now so we can get the radiator back in to get the fans back in and run this a little longer once we get some cooling in it. Oh, uh, heater hoses. Put those back on. Mm. 
All right, let's go get the clamps on them now. We got the fan, the air intake, everything's back on, belt's back on. Even though the Y pipe's holding the engine up right now, because it still don't have the transmission in, it's back here. It's right there. So, but I'm using the strap just to keep tension off the Y pipe so it doesn't, uh, or the exhaust, it doesn't damage the exhaust. Because um, I still wanted to hear it without the transmission hooked up to it. But I think we're good. Everything seems to be running good. Let's start it up so everybody can hear it. The battery might be a little low because it's... Yeah, it seems to be good. I don't hear any unusual noises. It's my exhaust. And I still got to put cool in it, so we're not going to run it too long. But oil pressure is good, voltage is good, even though my dash lights are burnt out. And uh, so yeah, should be good. Oh, I got two jugs of the full strength stuff, but I don't have any distilled water. So I gotta go to town and get some distilled water and we can put coolant in it. But yeah, it's sounding good. You know, the real test is gonna be once there's water in it, it doesn't have a blown head gasket or something and uh, test drive, but uh, pretty happy so far. So next step, we'll get, get the water in and then we gotta get the transmission back on, which means disassembling all the exhaust we just put back on, which is a pain in the butt, but just cause it's heavy and awkward. But overall, not too bad. I'm pretty happy now. All right, we're gonna get some uh, coolant in here now. We'll start out with uh, I'm doing full, or, uh, full concentrate of the, well, I'll just show you. Uh, the deck's cool, so I'm going to do half of distilled and half of this and just keep doing that until it's full. should take more than like two gallons because I don't think I even emptied two gallons. It's like a little less than two gallons. So, and oh, so the reason why I like to do it this way, it actually stems from a while back where uh, a gallon of, not, of concentrate was only a dollar more than a gallon of the 50-50. So for the extra dollar, you buy a gallon of distilled water and you get two gallons of coolant of 50-50 over the one gallon for, you know, half the price basically. So that's why I've always done it that way. And it's still cost effective. It's a little more expensive. They've raised the price of the concentrate, the full concentrate. But, uh, but that, yeah, that's why I do it. It makes more sense to me. It's more cost effective still so you just uh add distilled water and miss so i do like half and half and then sometimes i'll go ahead and pour one into the other i don't know why but i think it's easier to actually pour the coolant at least we'll find out here in a minute yeah so this is the last real test to see if everything is good with this motor i mean it's definitely running good there's no real noises like it was on the old motor. Definitely not that ticking noise. So it's already better. Let's we'll see how it goes. All right, those first two gallons. Oh, they even showing up on the fill a little bit. All right, so let's fire up and let it circulate a little bit. My battery lights on. I have to check that with the scanner. I don't know why that would be on. It's charging. Might still have to do with the fact that the transmission isn't connected. 
All right, so we're gonna let it run for a little bit just to warm up, get the temperature, and top off the coolant again. So it actually took about three and a half gallons. I forgot this is a different engine. It was completely empty. The block, my old block still has coolant in it. So that was the two gallons, but it took about three and a half gallons. And you see the temperature is not even up to uh, 180 yet. So it's still charging. I don't know why the battery light's on. I'll have to check to see why that battery light's on, but it's definitely charging. Oil pressure's good. So far, pretty good. I'd like to see the temperature come up a little bit higher than that. But I got the cap and everything on, it's topped off. Level. Right there. So yeah, that's just a matter of letting it warm up and go through a heat cycle here. And I can put everything back together and drive it. All right, so I wanted to scan the truck just to see why we got a uh, check engine light, but one of them mass airflow sensor, one of them was the map sensor, and the other 14 or the other 12 were all transmissions and a general misfire code. But the reason why it's transmission, because the transmission is not in the truck right now. But as you see, we're up to temp, right below 210, which is perfect. And no leaks that I can find or tell, and it seems to be running good. It'll run a lot better once it gets the load of the transmission on it too. So, cause you try to rev it, it just over revs because it doesn't have that weight on there. But anyways, we're getting there. So like I said, so we've got 14 codes. Most of them are transmission codes. 11 out of the 14 are transmission codes. So we gotta get that back in there so we can drive this thing. Got the transmission quote unquote cleaned up now. Um, good enough to go on and be under a truck out in the country. So we got to stick it back up in there, but first I got to drop the Y pipe back down. I lift the truck up a little bit more to get this actually under the truck. But I'm not gonna film all that because it's a bunch of boring stuff and uh, people have seen transmission installed before, so I don't think uh, I need to show that. It's just uh, like eight bolts and done. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Well, you know, real quick being like an hour or so. And then uh, we come back, we hopefully will be driving the thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse the transmission getting going in. So that way at least you get to see it going in. But just quickly. All right, so we got the transmission back in. So just a side note or a main note or whatever you want to call it. Before you put your transmission in, make sure you remove the bolt that you had put in. It's a bell housing bolt that I put in to hold the fuel lines up when I was putting all the wiring on to keep it in position. Because, uh, yeah, it kind of stops the transmission from going up and makes you wonder how the transmission is two inches away from the, the engine could possibly be lifting the engine when it's not even close to it. That's because there was a bolt in it. So I got that out finally and got everything in. Um, still need to tighten stuff down. There's a, a vacuum line, the other half of this, there's a vent line, the other half of this piece that bolts to a bolt up there. And there's also the uh, dipstick tube that needs to go back in. Um, so yeah. We got the transmission in, so now you just got to put the cross member in. I think I might change out that motor, that transmission mount, since it's easy to do right there. And then, uh, yeah, we should be able to... Oh, yeah. One of the GM design flaws. Let me get over here. As they went away from uh, covers for the transmission bell housing to uh, cover the... That's a call the torque converter. So now you have to, have to take the starter off to get to the bolt, uh, torque converter bolts to be able to put them in and tighten them. So now the starter's going to come back out again, of course. I uh, put the Y pipe back in. Um, so yeah, we're pretty close. Can't wait to have my truck back. All right, we are getting closer and closer to driving that thing. I put that plate back on the transmission. Everything's hooked back up. All O2 sensors, the transmission. 
Y pipe, all bolted in, all O2 sensors, I already said that, and everything else is good. So I think tomorrow, because I'm beat, this thing's kicked my butt today. Tomorrow, drive shaft is the last thing, and a couple little button up pieces. And we should be good to go. Thank God, I missed my truck. All right, this is the next day. Transmission's in. The only thing left is the drive shaft, like I said yesterday. I just want to test to make sure everything's working. So now, back to starting with the key. The steering's still disconnected. Oil pressure's still good. No check engine light, and the battery light went out. So it must have to do with the transmission not being in there. So, so far, so good. I'm um, gonna put everything back together today and focus and take it for a drive. All right, so the last things we need to do, we gotta get these skirts back on and wipe that grease off that uh, tie rod and get the wheels back on it. And we got a couple plates or bars that need to go on underneath. Fluid for the transmission and we should be done. It'll be test drive time. All right, wheels and tires are back on. The cover, engine cover's back on. The plates and bars that are underneath the truck, they're back on. Can't see them probably, but they're up there. Uh, I gotta torque the wheels still, but I put it down first. But my dumb butt decided to uh, leave the truck on. And, uh, cause I had to put the car in neutral, put the truck in neutral so I could spin the drive shaft to put it on. So I drained the battery, it happens. But uh, let that charge for a bit. I may put it down, I don't know yet because uh, my wire is kind of short, so. But we're getting real close to driving it. Right, I think it's probably charged enough by now. It actually fired up earlier, but I just wanted to let it charge. It says it's still charging, but we'll see. It's fired up so we can check the, cool the uh, transmission fluid. Anytime I check the transmission fluid, I always like to run it through the gears. Like reverse to park, or reverse, neutral, drive, and then back through, just so it circulates a little bit more. I'm not sure if it actually does anything, but that's what I do. All right, so we got now. It's a little bit low. It's hard to tell these dipsticks. Sometimes it's just like one side reads good and the other side reads bad. We definitely got some level on there. Yeah. Check it one more time. Yeah, I don't think it's good enough. Let's add some more. Time to check the vitals are good. 
So oil pressure is good. Temperature is good. Voltage is good. Everything's working. Time for a drive. All right, let's try this again. Hopefully the duck doesn't get in the way this time. So far so good, I don't hear any knocking or any noises. Temperature's good, oil pressure's rising when I give it gas. So far, so good. I'm going to time lapse the rest of it. All right, so it's a, uh, it's a good, successful first drive. Um, oil pressure dropped below 40 at idle now, but it's it goes up with RPM, so... Temperature staying good, voltage is good, everything's working. So I guess we'll just see. Well, time will tell. Still gotta do an engine flush on it. I haven't done that because I wanna let it run this oil a little bit first and then uh, I'll do an oil change in like 500 miles with the, uh, do a cleaner first and then uh, oil change. So that will be to come, but I think we are good to go for now. We'll check underneath the truck, make sure it's leak. Nothing's leaking or dripping. I don't see nothing. There's a dry bone under there. So it stays that way. That's an old rag. And my brakes are still hanging up. I might be bypassing my uh, ABS at some point because I can smell how hot they are. And it's really hard to turn the tire, the wheel, so I don't know yet. That's a whole different video. All right, that's gonna do it for the new, to me, engine in the uh, truck. So in this case, um, Facebook Marketplace came through for me, which is good and now the truck's back on the road and i can start using it again um like i said i'm gonna wait about 500 miles doing oil change and oil flush to try to clean that out I'm just gonna let it run and do some some heat cycles this way but uh yeah she's running good i'm pretty happy so if you like this video give me a like down there leave me a comment let me know what i can do what i can do better and subscribe while you're at it so until next time oh yeah i just want to say it. appreciate everybody who's been watching especially these longer videos i've, I've been not even trying to, but they've been going longer. So uh, if you enjoy that, let me know down in the comments. Um, I know my buddy Pete likes the longer videos. But uh, so, yeah, um, again, appreciate y'all watching. So until next time, I will see y'all later. Something actually dawned on me. This is the second motor I've got off of uh, Marketplace. And both have been a success so far. First one was the 400 for the Firebird. Second one's... Yeah, 5.3 for the truck. So I'm pretty happy about that. Let me know down in the comments what's the second engine I got off of Marketplace. So that'll tell me if you watched it the whole way through. So thanks again for watching.